the third and final hypothesis test that we're going to learn about this week is how we would do our hypothesis testing with proportions. This is called a proportion test. And we should begin by asking, what is a proportion test? It is a parametric procedure. That means we're going to be using population values. And we will be testing whether a sample proportion is statistically significantly different than a population proportion. In this example with the polar bears, we have a population value of 0 0.80. We choose a sample and we measure the same outcome for our sample, and this time we get a proportion of 0 0.72. Well, that's different than the population, but is it statistically significantly different? To answer that question, we're going to use our proportions test. There are certain assumptions for every test, and so let's see what those assumptions would be for a proportion test. Let's start with our independent and dependent variable. As we learned with a z-test and a t-test, we're still using one sample. Only this time, the dependent variable will be a proportion. So we need to have some kind of count data. Once we have that, we can calculate our proportion for our sample and compare that to our population. Assumptions of independence still hold. We want to make sure that the responses that we're getting from one particular person or individual or polar bear are not influenced by others in the sample. And we meet the assumption for normality if the following two conditions are true. If n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. These are the settings for a proportion test. The null hypothesis assumes that the sample proportion and the population proportion are the same. We would write this in symbols as h sub 0, p equals p sub 0, and we would substitute the actual population performance proportion where it says 0 0.80. The alternative hypothesis, h sub 1 colon p does not equal p sub 0, again substituting the value of the proportion from the population. Typically we use a 0 0.05 alpha level because we're using a normal distribution, then the 0 0.05 alpha level means our critical value will be a positive or negative 1.96 for that alpha of 0 0.05. Well, let's see what type of problem we have to solve. Ray, the owner of Ray's Diner, says that 80% of his customers order coffee. A waitress making her rounds surreptitiously records the number of customers who are drinking coffee. Of the 25 customers in her section, 18 are drinking coffee. She wants to calculate whether this sample is similar to the population for Ray's overall customer base. The null hypothesis would be that the proportion of our sample is equal to the proportion for the population. But of course, we need to figure out what is the proportion for our sample. We would do that by dividing 18 by 25, giving us a proportion of 0.72, which we'll compare to the proportion of 0.80. We want to be sure to check the assumptions for the test. Well, 25 times 0.8 is 20. That's greater than 5. And 25 times 1 minus 0.8 is 5. The assumptions have been met. We can use the normal distribution for this test. Let's walk through our five steps of hypothesis testing. We have one sample, which has a proportion. We have a population with a known proportion. This is the setup for doing a proportion test. The null hypothesis will be h sub 0 colon p equals 0.8. And our alternative hypothesis will be h sub 1 colon p does not equal 0.8. Remember that 0.8 is our population proportion. The level of significance will be using a two-tailed test at an alpha of 0.05, giving us a critical value of 1.96 in either direction. Now, before we calculate the statistics, I do want to show you our options if we were doing a one-tailed test. If we were doing a lower-tailed one-tailed test, our null would be that our proportion is greater than or equal to the population proportion, and the alternative would be that our sample proportion is less than the population proportion. 
For an upper tail test, we would simply reverse the signs. For a two tailed test, we use the equal and does not equal. And you'll notice that for all of these examples, that the equal sign always goes with the null hypothesis. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or simply equal to. Well, now we are ready to calculate the statistics. This is the formula for the standard error. We would plug in the values from our test. Uh, 0.8 times 1 minus 0.8 divided by 25, take the square root. That gives us a standard error of 0 0.08. That's what we will, we will use in the denominator for our test statistic. We will subtract the proportions, 0.72 minus 0.8, and divide by our standard error of 0.08, giving us a z-score of negative 1.00. And this is how we would walk through the remaining two steps of our five steps of hypothesis testing. For the z of negative 1.00, the proportion is greater than 0.05, a non-significant finding. These customers order coffee like Everyone else at Ray's Diner orders coffee in the same proportion. And this is how we would write that up at, for, in our APA style for our write-up. A proportion test was used to determine whether customers in a diner order coffee in the same proportion as the population of diner customers. The proportion of customers, 0.73, did not differ statistically significantly from the population with a probability of 0.80, Z of negative 1, P greater than 0 0.05. This suggests that our waitresses customers order coffee at the same rate as all other diner customers. And that is how we will do a proportion test for our business statistics class. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys next week.